Hi, I'm Eric Voss, and finally we have a Star Wars Last Jedi trailer. Nothing in this world can revert me back to a widow boy like Star Wars can. Not even director Ryan Johnson's initial warnings to avoid watching the trailer could keep me away. Clean? I don't wanna be clean. By the way, he totally changed his mind and gave us the all clear, so we good. There are a ton of new details in this trailer, many of them super missable, and I don't think everything is what it seems to be here, so I'm gonna break it all down, and if any of my speculation and guesswork ends up being accurate, possibly spoilers ahead. Let's get started. When I found you, I saw raw, untamed power. Okay, so with John Williams' classic orchestral harp, we open on Kylo Ren overseeing First Order construction. Now, if you look closely in that hangar, you can see some original Empire AT-AT walkers. That gives us a sense of scale of this place. It is massive. Now, I think there's a very good chance this place is the Supremacy, the new mega-class Star Destroyer and flagship of Supreme Leader Snoke. Its wingspan is 60 kilometers. Just for reference, the Inflictor, the massive Star Destroyer that we saw crash-landed on Jakku in The Force Awakens, was only 1.6 kilometers long. So the Supremacy is the largest Star Destroyer in any Star Wars movie. We actually get a different look at it later on. We also hear the voice of Snoke, played by Andy Serkis. When I found you, I saw raw, untamed power. Now, despite Ryan Johnson's initial concerns, it seems like this trailer was edited in such a way to misdirect us. And I think that's what could be happening here. Now, it seems like Snoke is talking to Kylo here, but it's also possible he's talking to Rey. In The Force Awakens novelization, when Rey battled with Kylo and considered killing him off, Snoke reached out to her and tried to recruit her. So, raw, untamed power definitely seems to describe Rey in that moment. Okay, next up we get these awesome shots from this battle on Krayt, with new First Order walkers advancing. Once again, they used an original Empire ATAT for scale here, notice how much larger these new walkers look by comparison. It was actually said that the First Order would be using these now smaller old models as scouts. These new walkers were actually nicknamed Gorilla Walkers, and now we see why. Their front legs are fortified and curled inward, resembling how a gorilla walks on its knuckles. Also, these new added shin guard shields look like they're there to cut any tow cables that would be used to trip them up, showing that they have learned from the Empire's past mistakes in the Battle of Hoth. And I love this detail of the red clumps of dirt being kicked up here. It just makes makes this battle feel more grounded and authentic, like we're seeing tanks move dirt as they shove through. The planet of Krayt is covered with white salt atop red soil. We actually saw those resistance fighters in the teaser dragging up that dirt as well. And yeah, that is Kylo Ren's Upsilon class command shuttle from The Force Awakens leading the charge up there. And before I move on, there's this overhead shot of Kylo leading these First Order troops. Based on the red streaks and the lava rock there, this could be Krayt, or that cavern with red crystals that we end up seeing later in the trailer. And it could just be a coincidence, but the framing of this shot reminded me of Anakin leading the way into the Jedi Temple in Revenge of the Sith. Of course, Kylo's connection to his grandfather is definitely a key motivator to his character, so it's possible this was intentional. Anyway, let's move on. And beyond that... Something truly special. Okay, some interesting shots here. First, there's this shot of Kylo in his helmet picking up his lightsaber in this red room. Now, it's kind of hard to tell, but there are red elite Praetorian guards in the background. They're kind of doing that Tobias Funke camouflage move. Now, these guys are similar to the red Imperial guards that accompanied the Emperor, but these Praetorian cards do Snoke spitting. There are eight of them in total, and they're supposed to be more active, badass melee fighters. Actually, behind the scenes footage showed Adam Driver sparring with stunt guys, and I think there's a good chance we'll see Kylo having to fight these Praetorian guards maybe as a form of punishment from Snoke for his failures in The Force Awakens. But then, when the trailer moves on to this vibrant blue shot of Rey, I love the color contrast this creates. When you reverse the order of these frames, it's like Rey and Kylo are back in a duel, with Rey's blue lightsaber against Kylo's red lightsaber. This red versus blue contrast is a common motif, seen in The Force Awakens, Luke and Vader in Empire, Obi-Wan and Vader in A New Hope, and of course, Pokemon. Let's move on. Something inside me has always been there. But now it's awake. And I need help. Okay, so this section brings us back to Luke's island on Ach 2, the moment after the ending of The Force Awakens. Now, a few subtle details I liked here. Look closely at Luke's cybernetic hand. It still has the blast damage from when he was shot in the hand on Jabba's barge in Return of the Jedi. Also, listen to the music in this section. Something 
This is a modified version of the Imperial March. Something. Actually, several of John Williams' Star Wars themes are mixed in here, and I'll point out others as they come along. Now, Ray's voiceover in this section is also interesting. Something inside me has always been there, but now it's awake. Now, Ray's probably referring to that Force vision she experienced in the preceding film, fittingly titled The Force Awakens. So, I'm expecting The Last Jedi to revisit the imagery of that vision and give new meaning to it, but I have more on that later. Then, in this shot, Ray hikes to this ancient rotting stump. Now, in the past, we've speculated that Luke could be living inside an old hollow out force tree, perhaps the literal roots of the first Jedi temple. We also get some more shots of Rey's lightsaber training, including this badass stop inches away from the boulder. This reminds me of that moment in the Matrix when Neo hit a breakthrough, stopping his fist inches away from Morpheus's face. You see, this is what it looks like when a raw trainee gains control. That's why I've never actually hit anyone. Total control. Don't hit me. Uh, moving on. I've seen this raw strength only once before. It didn't scare me enough then. It does now. This new section shifts focus from Ray's training to Luke's fear of what that training could lead to. The intensity of her focus cracks the ground she's sitting on, leading to Luke saying this. I've seen this raw strength only once before. It didn't scare me enough then. It does now. So Luke is referring to his past tutelage of Ben Solo, Kylo Ren, who turned on him and burned down his attempt to restart the Jedi Order. We actually see more of that memory here, with Luke actually being there for that attack, crawling out of the rubble. This fire could actually be what burned away the synthetic skin from Luke's cybernetic hand. And I think that the reason Luke was in this fire was to retrieve those ancient books that we saw in the teaser, which, remember, looked a little burned and smoke damaged. I talked about how those could be the old journals of the wills, the spiritual texts describing the old ways of the Force. I also like how Luke's fear in this moment echoes the warning from Yoda in Empire Strikes Back. I'm not afraid. You will be. It wasn't just Vader and the Emperor that Yoda was wary of, it was the fear that your student could one day use the skills you give them to do others harm. Now before I move on, check out that circular symbol on the ground behind Luke. It's not totally clear what this is, but to me, on the left side of that circle, looks like it could be a tree. Actually looking on the right side, maybe there are two trees there. One with a darker trunk and lighter branches, and the other with a lighter trunk and darker branches. This is kind of like the circular yin and yang symbol, but in this case representing the dual sides of the force. If this force tree stump is is indeed the site of the first Jedi temple, maybe this symbol is a marker left behind to indicate the location's spiritual significance. Let me know what you think. Let's move on. Let the past die. Kill it. If you have to. That's the only way to become what you were meant to be. This section of the trailer shifts to Kylo, with the music in the section being Williams' Kylo theme from The Force Awakens. He smashes his helmet, leaving it in the shattered pieces that we saw in the teaser. Now, it's significant to see him do this. That helmet was Kylo's link to his grandfather. He built it and wore it to more closely resemble Vader. Perhaps he's smashing it now after learning the truth about Vader, that in the end, he went soft and destroyed the Emperor. I'm thinking this could be something Snoke told Kylo in order to manipulate him into further distancing himself from his family ties. Listen to Kylo's voice over here. Let the past die. Kill it. If you have to. That's the only way to become what you were meant to be. He targets his mother Leia on the bridge, and he clearly doubts whether killing the past is something that will actually help him. We know from the Force Awakens novelization that murdering his father Han Solo didn't necessarily give him the increased strength that he hoped it would. So maybe that doubt will prevent him from doing the same to his mother. And notice Kylo's dark band-aid sealant on his face scar. I suppose that means his wounds from the Force Awakens are still fresh, and that maybe this space battle might be happening early in the film. But let's zoom and enhance on this space battle. Kylo's fighter is a TIE silencer, and the way he pilots it reminds me a lot of Anakin's piloting in the opening of Revenge of the Sith. Now, in this battle, it looks like the First Order Dreadnoughts are attacking the Resistance fleet, but if you look closely, these blasts aren't getting through the dome shield that surrounds the ships. On the right is an escort frigate, which looks like the Rebel Nebulon B from Empire, and Leia looks like she's on a Mon Calamari flagship called the Raddus. Now, the Raddus was named after Admiral Raddus, the Mon Calamari who led the Rebel fleet in the Battle of Scarif to retrieve the Death Star plans, which we saw in Rogue One. And if you look really
really closely in the background, this massive Star Destroyer looks like it actually has a wing on the left side as well. And I'm pretty sure this is the supremacy that I mentioned earlier. Meanwhile, on this bridge behind Leia are a few cameos. There are these Mon Calamari flight officers, many of whom appeared in The Force Awakens. And some of you have suggested that this Resistance officer looks like Gareth Edwards, director of Rogue One. Now, Edwards is supposed to get a cameo in Episode 8 to return the favor of him putting Last Jedi director Ryan Johnson in Rogue One. Remember, he was a Death Star operator. All right, let's move on. Okay, this section moves on to the supporting characters, Poe Dameron, Finn, Captain Phasma, and Chewie. Chewie appears to have taken the wheel of the Falcon in this movie. Here we see the Falcon evading TIE fighters in this interesting cavern lined with red crystals. I'm thinking this could be somewhere on Crate, with those crystals being the same color as the soil, or it could be a whole new planet, we'll see. Joining Chewie in the cockpit is this little cash grab by Disney, because every major property has to have some baby Groot or BB-8 to add an extra billion to the box office. Like, I don't care, I love this thing. This is a Porg, they're the winged creatures native to Ach-2. The filmmakers actually got the idea for them after seeing puffins, which are cute, goofy little birds that hop around the island of Skellig Michael where the Ach-2 scenes were shot. These porgs were created with a mix of CGI and puppetry, and notice how they gave them these sharp little teeth, so I'm sure we'll see them adorably bite someone. Next, we see more of what looks like a resistance retreat. I think Poe and the others are inside Mount Calamari escape pods, but notice Poe's tone here. We are the spark that'll light the fire that'll burn the first order down. Now, judging by his expression, it seems like the resistance might have just suffered some big setback. So I'm thinking this is part of that First Order Assault that we saw in the Resistance hangar in the teaser. Also, notice this huge blast that takes out an entire Resistance cruiser. Now, if you pause at the right moment, you see the source of that blast. Again, that is a supremacy. It is massive and powerful enough to take out an entire large ship in one go. Now, there's another quick cameo behind Poe here. This woman is Lieutenant Connix. You may remember her from The Force Awakens. She's played by Billy Lord, Carrie Fisher's real-life daughter. Now, I was also interested in this shot of Poe's X-Wing as it takes off. Looks like he's strapped on an additional booster to the back leaving this exhaust trail. We also get this awesome collision between Finn and Captain Phasma. Notice how Finn is dressed as a First Order officer. We know he's going on an undercover mission with Resistance Engineer Rose to infiltrate the First Order ranks. But I'm guessing that one of those First Order officers will recognize him and blow his cover. Someone with a personal grudge after getting left behind in a trash compactor on Starkiller Base. Captain Phasma redeeming her literal throwaway role in The Force Awakens. The weapon she's using looks like a Force Pike, which were carried by the Emperor Red Guard, but this is actually a new weapon from Phasma's home world, which will be described in her book. Meanwhile, Finn is using that First Order Z6 riot control baton, which you may remember FN 2199 using against him in The Force Awakens. Yes, it does appear to fold out differently here, but maybe that was just an alternate option that Nines didn't use before. Anyway, I just love the look of this shot, with the flames of the chaos behind them and Finn's face all reflecting off Phasma's armor. I actually think this location looks a lot like the possible supremacy interior that we saw before, so maybe like all giant enemy ships in Star Wars movies, the supremacy isn't long for this galaxy. Let's move on. This is not going to go the way you think. Okay, here we see this shot of Luke knocked down in the rain, which is a little similar to the imagery in Rey's Force Vision with Kylo in the Knights of Ren. So this may be part of a memory where he's talking to Kylo, warning him that his turn to the dark side won't go the way he thinks. Also on Crate, there are these crystal fox creatures running into the resistance base, probably retreating from those gorilla walkers. All right, screw the porks. I want one of these badasses. The look of their ears looks like it could be inspired by the ancient Egyptian Nabisan hounds. And then there's this shot of Rey diving under the water and no what is this huge skull? Now, it could be whatever killed that thing is a sea creature Ray will now have to face. It's kind of a Star Wars tradition for every movie to include some over-the-top alien creature, so I'm just excited to see what The Last Jedi brings. And after more shots of this awesome battle on Crate, we get the most interesting shot of this trailer a close-up of Supreme Leader Snoke. Oh, man. This render looks fantastic. His wrinkled skin and misshapen head just look super lifelike. But a big reason for that, I think, is notice how his lower face is covered. Now, as we saw with the CGI for Tarkin in Rogue One, animating the movement of the lips and the jaw in an authentic way is really difficult for even the best artists to pull off. So, you know, just show Snoke in super tight extreme close-ups from the nose up and you'll be as golden as Snoke's robes. Which, yeah, they're gold. What's 
to deal with that. Now, Snoke appears to be torturing Rey here, suspending her body and causing her to shake violently. And notice what he says. Fulfill your destiny. This is exactly what Emperor Palpatine said to Luke before torturing him with Sith lightning in Return of the Jedi. Fulfill your destiny. I think the takeaway here is that Rey, after being rejected by Luke, will seek to continue her training and learn the truth about her origin, even if it means turning to the dark side, when really Snoke would only want to use her for her raw, untamed power. Let's move on to this final section. I need someone to show me my place in all this. Okay, as I mentioned before, this trailer has clearly been edited to misdirect us. And I think this final exchange is another example of it. While I do think it's possible that Rey reaches out to the dark side in search of answers and training, I don't think that's what's happening here. I just don't think these shots of Rey are from the same scene. There's three pieces of evidence that I noticed. First, the lighting and color. Yes, both Kylo and Rey have the same fiery color tone on their faces, but the lighting is different. Rey looks like she's much closer to the light source, casting a harsher shadow on the right side of her face. Meanwhile, the light on Kylo's face is more evenly spread, suggesting that the light source is further away. Secondly, look at the background. Rey's location appears to be relatively stable, while Kylo is surrounded by smoke and embers. Wherever he is, it's currently on fire. I actually think the shot of Rey is taken from the campfire scene that we saw in the behind the scenes footage, and her saying, I need someone to show me my place in all this, is her last ditch plea to Luke to train her. And then finally, listen to her audio again. Just show me my place in all this. To me, that echo doesn't sound natural. Almost like it was added with an audio filter in post-production to make it sound like Rey was in an interior location, further trying to pull off this illusion that she and Kylo are facing each other. I don't know, this just reminds me a lot of the way that Rogue One trailer ended. Remember when they made it look like Jen Erso had gone to the dark side. What will you become? You can't always trust Star Wars trailers, people. Like, this could all be left on the cutting room floor by December. Which do you think is more likely in The Last Jedi? Rey turning to the dark side, or Kylo coming back to the light? And which supporting character do you think will steal this movie? Captain Phasma, the Porg, Snoke, or maybe one of the new characters we didn't see in this trailer, like Rose, or Vice Admiral Holdo, or Benicio Del Toro's character? Comment down below and tweet your thoughts to me at EA Voss, or follow New Rockstars on Twitter for updates on our videos. Now, this video was brought to you by our good friends at Loot Crate. Loot Crate is a monthly subscription box service for epic geek and gamer items and pop culture gear. For less than $20 a month, you get six to eight items that include licensed gear, apparel, collectibles, unique one-of-a-kind items, and more. Loot Crate has supported YouTubers since the company shipped its first crates. By supporting Loot Crate, you support our channel. Sign up at lootcrate.com rockstars and enter the code rockstars to save 10% on any new subscription or click on the link in the description. September's theme was robotics. I'm gonna give you an idea of what to expect. The October Loot Crate theme is mythical and it contains cool items from strange Things, Marvel, Buffy, and Ghostbusters. You have until the 19th at 9 p.m. Pacific to subscribe and receive that month's crate. And when the cutoff happens, that's it, it's over. So get on this, like and share this video, and subscribe to New Rockstars for all our deep dives and analyses of Star Wars stuff. And if you really want to support this channel, you can contribute to us on Patreon. Big thanks to all of our current donors, especially Kelly Hopper. Thanks for watching. Bye.